Oh, oh, hello. Oh, Good to see you there. <laughs> Welcome to our panel. The worst episode of the ride ever. Oh, there we are. Are you guys doing being uh, yeah. here? Yeah, I am. It's weird. I, I know, it's a big table too. Everybody's just back in the bus. Yeah. I'm a cool guy. It's cool. Mm -hmm. It's cool. Yeah. But actually, he's cool. That's what, I am cool as heck. It's uh. I'm kind of playing words on my last name, in case you're wondering. Uh, I grew up in New York, so everybody had big names. Um, cornbread, uh, pork rinds. Uh, I got lucky I got Kulzak because my last name is Kulzak. And my best friend was Paul B. Johnny. He's Paul B. A Jedi, so I'm sorry. <laughs> so. That's awesome. I have no um, cool nicknames. Oh. I'm Jamie Engel. Um, oh, right Engel. The right Engel, but yeah, no one calls me that. That's no. awkward. Um, but uh, but we're here today to talk about the process of collaborating, um, of converting and adapting a story to multiple mediums, um, and that would be really based off of our comic. This is issue one of the Nine Circles. Um, we we had three um, issues in this limited series, and the the last one came out on Wednesday. Wednesday, yes. Yeah. So we have all three come back to the table, you know. We also then also do the uh, collector side. We also have variants of each issue as well. And then also we have the super collector, um, which is one of a kind of sketch girl. So they're all hand drawn by me. And we've got those as well. But I know you guys want to know about our process, what it is. Um, I'll let Jamie start and then I will come in with some woody asides. That's perfect. I like that. Uh, so this story originated in my book, The Toilet Papers, Places to Go While You Go. It was just one of the short stories in here. Um, it's about a uh, demon cowboy who's tasked to lead the end time witnesses through the nine circles of hell. Mm -hmm. And I took that uh, story and in uh, like early 2021, I decided I wanted to try and write <coughs> scripts, like screenplays and, for television and, and movies. So I converted that into a screenplay for television, and it caught the eye of the owner of Blood Moon Comics, who I happen to also know, but I've never written a comic before. So he said, are you interested in maybe converting your screenplay into a comic book? So I had, um, it had won multiple awards, the script. So we, we tried it. Oh, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank uh, you I'm sorry, Joker. that's a Joker joke. Yeah, that was a problem. Okay. So. Uh, you guys dress the Joker here, so in case you're wondering what we're talking and about. And his girl. Sometimes. Oh, yeah. Sometimes. That's a guy that issue with that, but it's yeah. a different panel. Yeah, so it's, <laughs> it's relationships in the DC world. That's not yeah, ours. No, that's okay. right. So uh, anyway, back to this. So um, I had met Cool years back, and we had talked about writing something together, working on a project. But um, I honestly never, never thought it would really happen because I'm not a comic book writer. But um, Cool is. He's an amazing artist, and he also writes, and he also does the Marvel Upper Deck, mm -hmm. and he also does. Um, not production on other people's work. Um, like, oh, art direction. He's art direction. So he was my guy, and Cool has been so cool yeah. to kind of walk me through the process of converting a screenplay into a comic. Okay. Because, you know, when I wrote the short story, the story is, uh, as a writer, you tell everything. You are the director, the writer, the producer, the editor, the wardrobe, the lighting, the crew, um, the the marketing team, you do everything craft in your services. story. Craft services, for sure. Don't get me started. All right. um, so the story is very broad as far as all the sensory. When I wrote the, the movie or the TV show script, then it turned to just what you could see and what you could hear. So I had to remove a lot. But then when I sent it to Cool, I had to tell him stuff like there were certain things he needed to know so he kind of walked me through the process of taking those um the script and finding a place in between the book and the the movie script and that's where i think the comic lives yeah because with comics it's a whole different um medium I, 
because there's what's known you have to do everything based on the panels but you then have to do everything then to the page and then to the two pages so one of the big things that i'm always with and i've worked with her is what we call a page turn and the way to do a page turn is usually the easy way to describe this oh my god it's you and then you turn the page and you find out who, who the you is but you got to give them like that mini cliffhanger to check the next one out and also as you go through each book and each page every panel has to be different there has to be a reason why that panel is what's there and which panel is the most important on the page and really taking that together and figuring out okay how's the dialogue this dialogue overweight the images do we need this dialogue to be removed so the images speak for themselves or do we need the dialogue to overdo this and explain something in the story so it's really um kind of a weird place for comics not as easy as you know a, 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 a snoopy strip you know one two three it's all the same setup it's just joke when they, in the comic you have to go for the next like what's happening here. it's happening, uh, it's uh, happening. You know, so figure out what's the strongest part and where we want to go what we want to do so and Cole was really helpful when he explained how to do the dialogue that it, it's a tweet or less. Yep. If you're going over a tweet, you are writing the book. The, the old <laughs> 140 <stop>. characters <laughs> of what, how long a tweet is. Oh, like if that's the best way to do it, if you do more than 140 characters, you have to switch another panel or you have to get pretty much the whole page to it. Yeah, and that was very helpful for me because I obviously had never done any of this before. Uh, but, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to do the comic is um, because the script had gotten some good buzz. Um, I had, I was approached by, uh, oh. oh, oh yeah, sorry. And and even you watching. And you're all under NDAs. Even which, you watching. Yeah, non-disclosure agreement, because mm -hmm. we're not supposed to say nothing. Yeah. See, I'm not cursing. I'm not cursing. Not, I'm, I'm trying really hard. Really hard not to try to ask for that for Sorry. Uh, so um, I was approached by King's producer. He did Thinner. He did Steve The King. Stand. You just said King. It's like just it's King. King. It's King. Because now there's a new King. A new King? A oh. new King. I don't know what there's a new King? Yeah, I don't know. Hey, he can do what he wants. He, he's the new King. He can be the new King. Are you talking about his son? No, 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 not that, not the Weasley, not the Weasley. Talking about the Weasleys from Harry Potter, I'm so confused right <laughs> now. All right, King Charles III. Oh, come uh, on. That's, that's a, but no. That's I, I, I tried to, to be comical. You're trying to be like. But well, I brought Weasley in, though, know, because his son's a redhead, he's a ginger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that, whenever you say ginger, you have to say ginger. ginger. Yeah, yeah, totally. Sorry, so, sorry. Anyway. So I was approached by Stephen King's producer right, right. of Thinner and The Stand, and he's currently working on King's Next Project. And um, I was on LinkedIn and I get a message and he said, hey, check me out on IMDb Pro and come back. And I was like, okay. So I went and looked and I was like, you gotta do the beep, ready? Oh, Holy! Okay, and I, um, I was very shocked. So I, I thought, this is probably the best way to get him this story. So he read the script, he loved the script, and then Cool turned it into what yeah. it is in comic so, form. So she gave me, got in touch with me, and I said, if we're going to do this, we're going to do this pure to the comic form, not as a commercial for the idea of the story to make exactly. a TV series. We need to make this stand and tell for in comics because I'm really clear about that. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, you know, we're we'll talking about the actual hours and hours, but that's what we wanted to make sure that we broke it down to work in the issue format, also work better in the trade peer pack, mm -hmm. and um, really, really proud of what happened. You know, what's, what's the great, great is being able to come out now and have everybody see what we worked on because I've been locked in the house. You know, first COVID and then COVID gets done. And then now I have comments to draw, so I'm back in the house. Um, 
but it's it's really nice just to get out and be like out of the house and then you know shout out to folks who do very excellent and stuff like that happen. Yeah. And the real cool thing is with the next couple of months the tree appear back will be coming up. November, December yeah. or something. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's been a, a really cool process to go from because I write books, I, I've published eleven Words. novels. Words. I published eleven books. Um, so doing the transition into film and television was completely different. Um, I sold my first movie in June. Um, it goes into production mid next month, which is exciting, and it's already been sold to network television. Um, it's not anything I write when it comes. So figure it out. I don't can't. get me started. Don't get me started. Because I have some of the greatest ideas ever. We have gone on down the rabbit trail. For those Christmas <laughs> movies, I'm uh, yeah. The, so, yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's another panel. That's another <laughs> so, um, so anyway, so because of the comic, I, I sent it to the producer, and the day he received it, I get a message from him. Got the comic. I'm talking to my financing guy. Um, we're trying to get first round financing uh, right away. Uh, I want to be on board this project. So, and he actually texted me this morning that he got issue two and three. So now he's got the full, um, the full package. And I definitely feel 100%, even though he really loved the screenplay, um, seeing it like changed everything. And, and even as a writer, I cried when I got this because this is the first time in 10 years I've seen my story. Yeah. It's always just been words. So it's it's really cool to kind of and do all the three. collaboration too, yeah. which is great too, is because Jamie, his idea, here's what she has and what the character is. Okay, here's my version of it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, when, as an artist or as a um, writer, you're kind of in your mind casting who you think is your play or role. <laughs> and uh, myself, anybody that's in that draw is always 1980s Matt Dillon. Because the Matt Dillon, the outside, is the coolest man ever. So I always go for that. She's not, she's going more as a. Uh, I mean. Jensen Apples would be perfect because yep. the humor is just total supernatural. Yep. Quirky, and then there was a, a one character. It's on the back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Back. There's one character here uh, who came to and had a description. I'm like, I think Ernie Hudson would be great to play this character. So uh, I ended up drawing it, Ernie, and basing the character on Ernie Hudson. And Ernie Hudson ended up seeing the script, which is kind of cool. cool on that. And then uh, I can't ever say his name right. Asa. Asa Butterfield. Butterfield. He's got uh, Sanders game. The movie in this That's game. who I see for the for the one of the characters. Yeah. And, then, yeah. and then uh And then you can you can be the girl because you you have the same face. Uh, uh, I mean it's it's like uncanny. Uh, yeah. I drew her and I know, you did, I, you drew her. I, you are a comic character. So, yeah, call me. <laughs> <laughs> So what happens is we work on that, working out the original sketches, making sure they're approved. And then we have a, a Facebook Messenger um, thread that's probably thousands and thousands of pages. Probably work, three or yeah, work related. Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll send, send the page, has this page look, and then it comes back. I do the, for the comic <coughs> side stuff, uh, I do the um, pencils and inks. And then also do the lettering because I want to make sure that the lettering is fine and works with the layout because I know everything works together. So I do that all by myself. I do not do the coloring. Coloring takes me forever. I do color the covers, but otherwise, coloring takes forever. Those are done by the first two issues of a girl named Crystal Sayers. And then the third issue is the guy named Mori Tanaka. Who is now my permanent go to colors? He's, if you guys come back to the table, which I hope you will, um, look at issue three. He actually made me look through my pages and go, I don't remember drawing that like that. But he really took it and, you know, with very little art direction on it and made me look really good. Because yeah. I think I'm pretty decent as it is, but, you know, he's made me look amazing. You are amazing. I know. Yeah. I just said yeah. that. I just said that plainly. I, exactly. Well, well. <laughs> yeah, and I think one of the other uh, really interesting things is um, when you're when you're writing the comic. When I would see his art, like nine point nine, that wasn't a comic book. Okay. Nine point nine out of ten times. Thank you. 
Um, it was what I wanted to see, which meant that I was writing and translating it appropriately. You know what I mean? So, um, and then the few times when we didn't see it exactly the same, I was most of the time like, that's awesome. If it was a specific thing that I was like, hey, no, that needs to be a um, half human, half cougar, then I would say something. But otherwise I was like, dang, I didn't see it that way. That's awesome. And that's yeah. kind of fun about so, collaborating too. So what we do, you know, one of the, in the first page, your really introduction is trying to figure out how to show like time and the wind and stuff. So I have the candle the gag is like, you know, we're just blowing and just slowly wavering like happens. It's kind of like the passing of time mm -hmm. where it's something more cinematic. Right. Which I couldn't do a lot. Another thing I almost do. You got good angels, aren't you? Oh, okay. I told him to draw 10,000 angels. Oh, like, well, maybe. That's it. All right, yeah, so here's the difference between the writer and the artist. Okay. Writer, everything is, is blue skies, all right? Everything is a page, it's words. So I get a script and it says tens of oh, thousands. Oh, tens of thousands, you're right. Thousands. I think tens, ten, ten thousand, tens of ten thousands. Tens of thousands of angels fall from the sky. a couple extra feathers. So like, the only thing I want to draw tens of thousands are or it's a bowl of rice, and, you know, that's the only thing. So here's my uh, take of that effect. Perfect, totally so, done, tens of yeah, thousands. So I cheat a little bit, yeah, I can say some of the secrets, but came across a lot stronger, um, and then, then coming in because we're working with that back and forth, and trying to figure out what works in the comic and what works in the mind. And, um, one thing too, you guys have noticed is I am not a five panel page guy. This is your most comments for five panels. I you know some of my pages are like 10 to 15. Um, Cause I grew up obviously in the eighties and uh, one of my dudes was George Perez and uh, he, he packed the, yeah. Um, he packed the pages in and uh, you know, so uh, luckily I was able to, you know, do a little trivia. In fact, in the back of issue three, um, it's a nice trivia to George. Yeah. That, was, that was before he passed. Yeah, it was before he passed, right? When he got an to he was like, so, um, you know, that's my, my goal is to make him proud and uh, really come across. Yeah. But that's enough of that heart touching, heartfelt stuff. But, that's it. Um, but yeah, so we we are found a good relationship working back together mm -hmm. um, with the writing and the art. Uh, we actually have another one shot coming out to Blood Moon Comics in December. Yep, um, November, November, the day before Thanksgiving. Yes. So you know, so you guys go turkey. go to the shop, get the book, go out and get yeah. some uh, shots of wild turkey. Okay. You just should do the day before yeah. Thanksgiving. Okay. And then when you don't want to talk to family anymore, you grab her comic and say, hey, it's I'm reading the literature. Yeah, and it's called um, it's Gaijin in Tokyo. Yeah. It's based off of a story that I wrote in Tokyo in 1999. Um, it's a kind of a supernatural murder, and it's all in this book. Yep. And then after that, we've got some more stuff that our own NDA can't reveal what we're, what we're doing on it. Mm -hmm. No, you don't know yet. I'm trying to make it look like we decide what we're doing. <laughs> well, you know. so right now you're, the comics are available in all your local shops, and, or mostly also here at the table today. Yeah. Right here where we're sitting. It's, where we're sitting. You know, right here. Is that like a horrible? <laughs> I love it. Do so you guys have any questions? I don't know why I'm going to do one there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, when you were doing the for the comic, mm -hmm. what particular, how detailed did you make it? I mean, was it like a panel by panel script or was it more like the old Marvel method where you're telling what's going on on the page and what people should be saying and then the artist goes in and kind of- um, I, A little bit of both. Um, I, I would do my best to my interpretation of where the page term should be. Okay. So I would do the, you know, panel one, um, narration, if it was a voiceover, I would let him know, so that way he could put it in the box. And then if it was in the um, balloon, not the bubble, as some people like to call it, um, then it would, 
Yeah. And I would put, you know, the, the character's name in their dialogue. If it was something specific for him, I would just say, like, you know, make sure the trees are from gold, which they're not. And one time, like 16 pages later, I described what a character looked like that was introduced earlier. So I'm learning, like, I just missed it. You know, but but he's like, hey, would it really cool to know? <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of things, too, I do a lot of my uh, page work, and uh, <coughs> I do a rough some pencils and kind of a, um, a more uh, involved pencils, and then I scan them in and I do my finishes on the iPad in the uh, Clip Studio. Clip Studio. So I'm able to then go, if she has to make that change, I can go make that change easier than the old days when everything was bristle boards, where I didn't have to get my Doc Martin whiteouts and go paint and fix it up. Right. But so right now, it's so like, I'm still getting my hands dirty, but the use of the iPad has made my speed probably two thirds faster. Yeah. Yeah, so. and, and the, the thing like with collaborating too, I hand it off to him and then like, I don't care. You know, so he would say, hey, I'm going to combine these two into one page, or I actually extended this, or I moved these panels around, and I'm like, just like that. <laughs> for the, you. For the old, the, um, what we just finished, because it's still um, in my mind, was there was a reveal at the end of the story. And I think we got to do this a little bit bigger. So I ended up making a two big spread. And took some things that happened early in the story and combined. I said, I'm going to combine this. So, what you want to do is when you're writing for someone, know their strengths. That's all key. Does somebody rather have the pounds broken down? Are they strong in that? Um, or let them go. Let them, you know, Marvel style is a lot more free form. Mm -hmm. And unless somebody is more experienced doing comics, Marvel style may get into a little bit of a tricky situation because it's not plotting everything correctly. Even if you take Marvel style and uh, shot by shot and combine them, or you do page by page. So rather than do a panel work, say this is what happened to happen in this page. Mm -hmm. This is what happened to happen in that page. Myself, I like style like that, but also dialogue. So I know ahead of time. So as I'm doing my roughs, I know what the dialogue is. So I can place my balloons where I need them to be. So as I draw, I'm not now drawing, you know, buildings that are blocked by a balloon, you know, wasting that time. But also at the same time, I know, okay, here's how the flow goes, and here's where the call and response. Um, so that's really when you're writing, is figuring out what works for you, but really find out who you're writing for. Because comics are really necessary like me as well. I have some stuff to table where it's all just me. Just drawing your ink and words and pictures just me. But then there's works I have with Jamie where we work and combine so we know what works for me or works for her. Um, it's just really just figuring out what, you know, so it's yeah. nice. So, if a person were, um, for my daughter, if, if a person were going to ultimately <coughs> make things into panel work, mm -hmm. is it wise to write it as a story first and then convert it to okay. panel work? Yeah. Or is it wiser to just envision the panel work? Is she, is she a writer or is she an artist? She's primarily an artist, okay. but she also has a lot of stories okay. All right. of her character. figure out what her strengths are. Mm -hmm. Because if she myself, I work I work opposite. Mm -hmm. I work panels first and then dialogue. So I cut my sketches and everything I have little notes like I have a um I have a format which is like the size of the size of a comic and then like a space to describe what's going on in dialogue. So I'll do the rough of what I think the page will look like here. Okay, so so walks in, he says this, he says that. So I know ahead of time what I'm doing, so it's like a blend of each. Um, depends if she feels more strongly with the story part, have her write that. But if she feels more confident in the art, I say to the rough drawing 
and then go to the words and then combine. But you have at least some sort of outline. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Going. So you've got some. I, I do that as well too. Sometimes right. I'll write an outline. I'll have an mm -hmm. outline saying, okay, here's this is where the story is. Where do I make the pain breaks? Yeah. Where are, um, you know, another thing, Thomas, you have to make sure that the story ends the right page. Right. We, we were talking about that, mm -hmm. where her sequences were one page off, so mm -hmm. all the sequences ended on the page term is on the left side, yeah, the, not on the right side. The, yeah, and on the even page, not the odd page, because the even page, when they open it, is there on the one that the page, when you do the page, the biggest the shot. And, and you can also do a short story, too, if that helps her. Like, just write out a short story and then right. dissect that down, okay. whichever. How many pages was the film script? Um, bye, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I want to say it was like, like 68, maybe, around that hour. Is that supposed to be a feature one? No, it's for a TV show. So, oh, like, so it was a like 45 to 60 minutes. So it was, it was within that range. But yeah, so it was like a pilot. And then adapting that to the comic, was that one comic or several comics? That was three comics. That, three comics. That, um, How many pages were the comics? 24 each. 24 each, so 72. Okay. Yeah. All right. So more than a, than a page to page. Yeah. yeah. Ratio. Yeah. Because what happens is with the comics, you've got the splash page, you've got um, what's the splash page? The, the splash page, okay, no problem. Anyway, I mean, so I'm just speaking when you do the comics. So, mm -hmm. a splash page, this one's a half splash, where it's in a comic, the splash page is the whole page, the whole full page. Um, so, as you oh, that's through, like the, the like right before they do the um, like the end of the teaser, yeah. your splash mm -hmm. page is the end of the teaser yeah. before they here's, do the uh, splash page right here. Uh, so some introduction to a character will be a whole full page. Um, so what will happen is it may only be a little bit of dialogue, but it's really powerful. Right? He, he just took over with all his drawings, yeah. doing all his art and stuff. And then there's two page spreads, which will now to inside of a tavern. So I know it's a larger, a larger place you want to turn on across. And then as you go on, you know, it's a whole different language you know even though you're in a writing it's in the film you have the set uh presidium you know like the stage you've got that um two by three or 185 the one whatever the ratio is now you've got that comics you can change it up you can make it fit wherever like here i've got larger i've got well, close up, so I've got a, a medium a shop, you know, I just have a nasty rank ass or <laughs> rank butt. <laughs> and then as you go, it's just the thing with comics, every panel, <clears throat> and this is why I try to teach some other folks, every panel needs to be different from the panel before and why those panels were set up for it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of more like movie shots. Like his almost is like a storyboard if you break right. it down that way. So if you take that 60 page com um, television script, the shots are going to be broken down within that, and that's kind of what translates. And did you have to cut material from the script? I don't think so. Oh, not really. It's pretty much like Sandman. Did you yeah. add material? No. For the comic? No. No. no I mean, no, you, no. he added some I player. I did, yeah, because what happens is he has the script, and so one page. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have one page, one issue, one, one episode. I'm so different. Yeah, like the pilot episode. The one pilot episode saying, okay, here's what the pilot is. Here's what needs to be done. So I, it was my job to look at it. As just the first comic Jamie ever wrote, I had a teacher, hey, this is how comics work. Where is the page break? Where is the issue break? Where do we know it needs to go for each part? Um, so that's what we really did, you know, come to the table, we can show you where it's kind of, okay, here's act one, act two, act three kind of thing, but a little bit different mm -hmm. because in the comics, you need to have that structure with each of the comics as well. How many characters are in the script, speaking parts? Six, seven, under ten, like and, main characters. And did they all make it into the comic? Mm -hmm. When the three issues, yeah. Uh, no, There's the, no. the three angels, uh, yeah. four main characters, yeah. a couple demons. Yeah, probably more than that. Yeah. Uh, you know, Story-wise, what kind of changes did you make for the comic? 
Um, honestly, it I I feel like it follows the like if you watch the TV show, if they if they took this and visually built it out based off of the television script, it would be almost like you know it's really close if they you know keep it that way. Yeah, I didn't change much, and you know my my writing. Um, my, my TV script writing is very similar as far as the, I don't have a lot of long paragraphs. Well, there, there were a couple between the two angles in the middle of the story and he just broke it up into panels and, you know, yeah. just like they would if you're watching the show, it'd be different shots, you know. You said it's going to go into production? No, that's a different one. That's my rom-com. That's oh, why I like Hallmark yeah. rom-com. Well, right now, this not is my demon story. He's not the producer and he's looking for the most important thing. When you made a television show or movie, mm -hmm. funding. funding. Yep. There's no fun in funding. Uh, that's the truth. Yeah. Like uh, some old famous. friends of mine used to tell me, uh, Risa, the Giza, ODB, cash rules everything around right. and cream, cream, fun. Now, 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 now. Exactly. Do you have a uh, question? So um, I know it's not in production yet, but are we worried about too many hands in a cookie jar? Because what you said earlier really struck a chord with me. We have to take our words and now we have to make them pictures. Mm -hmm. But now we have to take those pictures and we have to make it seamless in our shots for videography. Very different thing. Are we worried about losing translation at all as we keep changing the media form? Or do you think you have a solid enough foundation that they can run with what you have? Um, um, that's a great question. Um, I feel like it's solid enough because um, it was based off of a script. This, you know, it wasn't like he took, we didn't take the story and make a comic. We took a, a script and just changed the formatting, really. That's really all we did. That's why it's so similar. Because we just changed the formatting from a, a comic script or a TV script to a comic script. And part of my background as well is um, at the Minneapolis College of Art and Design, I took a uh, storyboard. Okay. So kind of. I did not know that. It kind of <laughs> um, it kind of works a little bit hand in hand, but it's a little bit different. Um, but um, with the comics, I know what shots will work and what right. doesn't. And, and for the rest of it, like I have a, a Bible for the rest of season one, two, and three, um, detailed for the first season, obviously. Um, I have no intention of doing more comics until the show is sold, okay. yeah. because I don't want that to happen. I want to make sure that if, if the show is sold and we're doing episodes and I'm show running, that it actually matches and that they support each other. So. What percent of your vision? Original vision from the script, would you say made it into the comics? I would say like 110 because he made it better. But wow. <laughs> uh, what happens is because we've no, always. It's, all of it. all it's of it. really weird though because we actually have always talked about working together, our meeting in cons and things like that. And always been an indie talent guy. And she, December, called me and said, out of the blue, said, hey, you want to finally do that? Yeah. So, so, so was there anything that you had to cut or revise for the comic from this, going from the script? No, I don't. I don't no, surprisingly, you know, I I'm, I was amazed as you are. Is the fact is that everything came in, and I'm like, okay, it's nice, nice flow, but let's make it so worth the comic. So some things maybe got rearranged a little bit, yeah. and you know, um, some of the inner cuts of. Um, the couple, the A, the, the A to B scenes yeah. might have been moved slightly, but otherwise, you know, we worked really well coming across and really making that decision. Yeah. On what's impressive. Is that what you think? Uh, I think we're a pretty good team. Considering nothing got cut at all, which yeah. is amazing, and that's impressive, are you willing to let go if you run out of material? So let's say, not let's say, when the show sells and we're going. Um, we're going for it. If you run out of the material, this story is done for you. Are you willing to tell them that we're done, or do we get a Game of Thrones season? Oh God! So because uh, I, I, I don't want totally. that. I, I would want an artist to have full disclosure of their work and say, "No, I'm done." But I'm yes. curious to hear from you. Would you be willing to let them try to take creative direction of your work? Um, I, I don't know. That's a really good question. I mean, I would like to say in in a creative. Um, spirit hell no but that's probably not true but i would feel like um if they 
if the show starts to pick up momentum and they want more seasons and it makes sense to the story, then I would support that. But if it's just to continue a, a money cow, a cash cow, like <clears throat> I would probably just, you know, just pay me for my IP every week. I'll, my check send it here and I'm going to go work on my other show, you know. But on the other side too, though, is with the mediums, they're different. So um, a lot of people complain about, oh, this is not the comic, it's going the comic, it's not the comic book. You always have that comp, right. and that's always different because, you know, Watchmen, for example, that was a, the movie was a nice takeoff of that, but the comic is still the comic. You know, people saying, you know, George Lucas killed my childhood doing this. No, those three movies when you were a kid are still there. It didn't change anything. Right. Let it evolve. Let things happen, you know. Because if we want to go back and change it, we can always go back to the page. Yeah. You know, and is there send checks for that IP? It's all okay. Yes. So what are you talking about? <laughs> 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 um you they're they're probably gonna have the live stream yeah. to where you can download it later and you can watch it. We're talking about writing comics, books, and TV. Yeah. And then if you came and went in time, everybody got $50. Everybody. We gave everybody $50. Mm -hmm. so. Shame. And a piece of pie. Uh, oh. mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I, my brain did validate it. <laughs> Any other questions? One yes. More. Oh, so, you're next, sir. Oh, in, the, in the costume. <laughs> Um, do you think the reason it was in a comic form is one of the reasons they got picked up because it was already in a storyboard, so he didn't have to sit there and yeah. read it? I 100% I feel that even though he was like, I love this comic, yes, I want to be on or this this story, yes, I want to be on board, keep me in loop. The day that he got Cool's art was the day that he said, I am I'm currently seeking first round funding. So 100%. Uh, it's still proof of concept. Mm -hmm. If you want to build a, a, a better tribe or whatever, if you can come in with a manga, it's going to make way more sense than coming in with. And the fact is that, you know, not to my own home, I am a comic purist. She just didn't grab somebody that could draw, but not tell a comic story. Like me? Yeah, you. Like she, uh, you can art too. Can but there's too. a lot of people out there that can draw, but can't do a comic. Because you have to, you have to come, <laughs> you have to come up with that continuity where drawing that same character in the book ninety five times and know it's the same character, and drawing those, conveying those um emotions, those emotions and bringing them across, and you know you can definitely you know just see in any page you can see what I'm looking oh, for, you know, there. so just the cuts and mm -hmm. the emotions, or sometimes there's no words needed. What? You and your words, you and your words. Yes, sir. I was just going to ask about exposition. So were there any monologues or any long sequences? There, There's a conversation with two angels, or an angel and a demon, but they're the same thing. Um, and it was a back and forth a lot. Issue, issue three started with that. Mm -hmm. um, originally it was set up when issue door would have broke down issue two and then issue three. I'm like, yeah. okay, well, let's make this reveal a little bit better. Let's have him show up at the end of issue two. Like, who is this guy he's yeah. not talking to? And it's just, hello. You know, yeah. like, it's just like, oh. So when issue yeah, three starts, and it's, um, it's an angel character. So what I did was, on a comic sign, um, so I took the lettering and I inverted it. So the words are white. And the background is black. Because he's a jerk. Kind of they give a more deep, I always look at more of a deeper tone. Mm -hmm. That, oh, okay, he's coming and he has more gravitas for this. And then coming across with that idea. And then one of the things we came up with too is the, the angels have different types of their eyes are reversed. And so the, the pupils are white and the, um, the white part are blue. Whatever, right. that, whatever the other part, the, yeah, yeah. the yolks are, the white, yolks are white, and the <laughs> the uh, whites are now like purple or gold. <laughs> the yolks. So I love that. 
<laughs> so just coming across with that idea, because you know, like I said, I came across saying we're going to do this. We're going to do it for your story and for the uh, chance that we made something different. But as a comic, I'm pretty damn proud of it. It says all as a comic. Uh, not an Alan Moore, but yes. Uh, so, like in terms of translating this written word to images, mm -hmm. how verbose do you tend to be in terms of like describing what you want to see on each panel? Like it's the translation process from like script to actual art, basically. Um, I mean, most of it was <clears throat> like specific enough. Like I would say, he's a he's a demon cowboy, and then like go you know um some of the things i had in mind like i would have a couple of demons and i would say this is like a jaguar human hybrid this is a that um there's ten thousand angels here but you know like it was it wasn't um he's the artist so i tried to stay out of his lane and just give him enough to be inspired to drive and then the places where he was veering off and looking at big balls of yarn i would say no that's not what i want and but that didn't happen very much. I'm always the cat for life. But what I would do, she was able to give me a little bit of rain, you know. It's not one of the she's not giving me a Alan Moore script, that's a watchman where Alan Moore script is the writer of uh, Watchmen and uh, Swamp Thing and his scripts are famously super boring. Like they'll explain one panel in like four pages or one time. Um, and then, but then he knows who he's working with, right. you know, and that collaboration works great. She really, Jamie really trusts me, and you know, it depends on who you're working with. If you know a guy's not gonna take the effort to put that in, you got to write it. You know, it's really it's sad. It's just it depends on who you're working with. You know, if you want to write a generic script for anybody. Put as much information as you can, you know. But if you trust somebody, you know, okay, he's gonna make the right choices, you know. Or she. Yeah, or she. Uh, but let her. Let, you know what happened too is when we first started, I would send the thumbnails, the page breakdown. So okay, here's what we do. Here's the panels. I'll let you know. So okay, and then at the end, she's like, oh, so just go. So. You know, okay, I'm going to do this with this character because I feel I'll set up this portion later on better. Okay, go. Yeah, yeah, and like in the um, in Gaijin in Tokyo, like I wanted, I don't remember what they're called, but those like Japanese cats, uh, like the statues that are everywhere, especially in 1999. Oh, and, uh, yeah, the yeah. Cats. So I was like describing the the porch, and I'm like, there's that has to be there. Just it has to be there. Yeah. And so. uh, that one too is. Uh, the first page, and I have some of the uh, large uh, pages to show you guys to come back from that. Um, first page is uh, downtown Tokyo. So you get this 1999. So I have set the scene, and that balcony is a high rise story. I draw that on top of each other. So I have the design of how each apartment looks different than the other. How the outside looks different than the other. Mm -hmm. And there's a conversation between two people on two different boards. So now, usually it's a conversation that's horizontal, not vertical. So that was fun too. I'm like, okay. Well, and this story started, I reached out to him and I said, hey, can you do kanji? <laughs> like, you know, it's easy. Yeah, hey, Very easy. Like, kanji. You know, the way I look at it, I can draw everything. And sometimes I can cheat it. To look like they enjoy everything. I can make it look like they enjoy everything. Any other questions? All right, so it's our turn to ask that question. Oh, uh, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we are grateful for your time. Yep. We would love for you to come back to the booth and just check out our stuff and yep. you know talk further if you'd yes, like to. Jamie's got her world books. I, I do have, have real books. I have uh my independent stuff I drew myself, uh, book called Evil and Alpha X. What are we, 72? Uh, so there's no numbers. Oh. This, uh, the, the We're middle. in the middle-ish. Over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, 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 right over here. Right over here. Yeah. Oh, Come on, okay. go down the main aisle, you'll see me and her. And then right in the middle is our uh, sequential art baby. Yeah. So. And, triplets. 
Well, thank you guys. I appreciate you.